So our fourth and final tissue is nervous tissue. And nervous tissue, probably familiar with it, uh, in as much as that it conducts electrical, or it propagates electrical uh, propagation. Let's see, propagation. So this is to move electricity along uh, a neuron, along a neural network. So this is the electrical propagation of an impulse. And an impulse is something that you want to do, whether you're aware of it or not. So whether it's a conscious impulse or an unconscious impulse, uh, meaning a thought that you have, say you want to get up and get a glass of water, or to contract your blood vessels uh, to raise your um, blood pressure. So any of those things are impulses, and how a neur neuron is doing that is changing the polarity or the charge on its membrane, and it's moving ions across the membrane. And you remember ions are things that have charges on them, like sodium and potassium. So those are some ions. And I can flip the membrane charge around from negative to positive and back. And you can think about it also with electricity the way that a battery has a positive and a negative pole as well. So we'll get into all that <clears throat> later. But for now, good enough to know that nervous tissue is for the electrical movement of an impulse or what we call an idea until it becomes an action. So it goes kind of idea to action. Or it could just stay an idea and you could just have a thought about it and not actually do anything. So two things in the nervous tissue you want to be aware of are something called glial cells. It's plural. We'll just say glia, singular. These are the support cells, and they do so many things that the word support is just not descriptive enough. But these are the support cells. They guide the immature neurons and the mature neurons as to what to do and where to go and how to coordinate with each other, and they provide an immune, immune function. The uh, nervous system's immune players are a little bit different. So you can find out all about glial cells. Uh, there's so many new discoveries about what the glial cells actually do. There's several different kinds, and they're in different places in the central nervous system. So we can think about glial cells as really being the backdrop for what you might actually think of when you think of ner uh, nervous tissue, uh, a neuron. So neurons are actually the cells that move the electricity. So neurons can respond. They can respond to stimulus and they can propagate an impulse in response to that stimulus. And a couple of things about neurons that they look a little bit different. Well, maybe they look a lot different from the regular cell that you're used to seeing. I'm not going to draw anything too fantastic here, but just some basic imagery will work for us today. All right, so at some point we can see that this has an extra length here that most other cells really don't have. And this is not cilia or microvilli or anything like that. This thing that you may have heard of is called an axon. And this is pretty much how the electrical impulse travels. So the axon, there's lots of things going on in the axon you'll learn about, but the axon uh, transmits the electricity, the impulse. So that long extension is different from these extensions. This thing that kind of drew it like a star. This is the cell body of the neuron itself. And so this thing in the middle is, of course, the nucleus. There are organelles inside of a, a neuron cell body, the mitochondria. And there's, there's also a cell membrane. There's all kinds of things, but they're named differently because 
their name to reflect where they are, that they're part of the nervous system and not part of a, a regular body cell. So the cell body of a neuron has the nucleus, it has organelles, and then it has these, these things that look like extensions, don't they? Like they're reaching out, and they are. They are reaching out to other neurons or other receptors, we'll say, not to make it too precious right now. But they're reaching out, and you'll notice that they have these little branches here, like little baby branches from a tree, or kind of like the neurons hands, you know, encountering the universe there. These are the sensory receptors. They're called dendrites. The word dendrite means little tree. Little trees. You can think of them as the little branches. They're the receivers. And so you've got information coming in here and in here and maybe over here. And so the neuron's adding all of this up and basing whether or not it's going to respond down this axon and tell somebody else about it, depending on how much of the information was coming in. So if a lot was coming in here and a lot was coming in here and it kept uh, repeatedly coming in, eventually it's enough in this case, to cause the axon to transmit the message that was coming in from all sides down its length and to this little end part here. There's a couple ways to talk about this end part, but we'll just call it the terminal end of the, of the axon. We'll talk about what these little feet are later. But for right now, that's all you need. Don't forget that the cell body has a nucleus. It's a neuron cell body. That There are two types of nervous tissue cells you want to be aware of. One is glial cell. The other one is neuron. There's a bunch of different glial cells. They have all different shapes. They have all different jobs. Um, they are in the central nervous system. The neurons themselves, though, the ones that we've drawn here, these are in both the central and the peripheral nervous system. And so we'll see that their cell bodies are usually in one place, and their axons might be uh, very long, maybe even the length of your leg. It's kind of fun to think about, isn't it? All right, so that's enough for the nervous system and that does uh, that wraps up our discussion for histology on these videos thanks for watching